Hi everyone. Good morning. Um, I here. Hold on. Oh. I wanted to talk to you for a moment about um, our dreams. You know, I've done videos on my YouTube channel, the Bony to Woods YouTube channel, about why it is the angels keep telling us humans that our 3D, very real, real lives are actually just dreams. And um, what, what that means, it's not a demeaning, it's actually an empowering statement they're giving us. And so I wanted to take that a little further along. Uh, this, uh, this, what is it, Thursday and Friday, Dante Constantine and I are teaching a course on how to develop your inner spiritual leadership uh, skills. And one of the things that I think is a tool for it is how we relate to our um, 3D physical state, our higher realm state, i.e. connecting with our souls, our angels, our guardians, our guides, whomever, and our lower realm state, which isn't just like earth magic, it's also our dream state. So here's the thing. <laughs> Hold on. There we go. Before we come to life, this is the Akashic perspective, and you know, I'm all about Akashic. Before each of us comes to life, our soul plans our life. And then our soul picks an aspect of self, meaning a little bit of our soul, to become us. So even before we are born, each of us is the perfect vessel for the life we're going to live. And of course, because we don't know while we're living what that life was, it's a big improvisational game. And we feel like we're out here with no support on our own making it up as we go along, trying to live our life path, navigate it. We don't even know what it is. This is just kind of me. Well, cut then to when you sleep at nighttime, when you go to sleep and you have your dreams. And of course, a lot of us don't even remember our dreams. Uh, so, but we do know when we have dreams, a lot of times in our dream state, we are in a situation we don't understand it. We don't know how we got here. We don't know what's going on. Things are happening that don't make sense and we have to figure it out. We have to navigate it. So our dream state to us in 3D is very much our 3D state to our souls in the etheric. Um, so that's something to think about. Also, the easiest way for our souls, our guardian angels, our guides, anyone non-physical who is trying to help us, our easiest way for them to communicate with us is through our gut instinct, our sacral chakra. And you know, you're like, oh, my gut told me to do this and I did that instead because it was logical. And so listen to your gut instinct. You don't need to follow it blindly, but talk to it, listen to it. And then the other way they can communicate to us is in our dreams. Like dreams serve a purpose. And part of that purpose is to help us, you know, do neurological, biochemical, psychological stuff. But part of it is also for those who are trying to help us from the non-physical to connect with us in like a middle ground, a gray area where it's easier for them to reach us. Um, and we think that we're just like, I don't know, the haphazard victims of our dream state. But before humanity decided to separate from Earth, before we decided to live in houses and not pay attention to nature, humans used to use their dream state as a tool for life. Look at the dreamwalkers of Borneo when the Blair brothers, Lauren and Lawrence Blair in the 1980s in their amazing Rings of Fire documentary series uh, for, I think it was National Geographic, might have been PBS, um, went to Borneo. They went with a crew looking for this tribe of people who most considered extinct because no one had seen them for years and years, like decades. They wandered through the jungle on this remote island and then they stumbled upon the dreamwalkers and the dreamwalkers were all there gathered they lived in little micro tribes in the size the community size that the environment could support 
but they communicated through their dreams. So even though they were physically apart, they were always in communication. And they knew the Blair brothers were coming before they had even set sail for this island. And they were there waiting for them. The whole, all the little micro tribes had gathered and they were having a big festival waiting for the Blair brothers to show up through their dream communication. And then there's, darn, I meant to look this up again before I spoke to you guys. So I do not have all the details, but some time ago there was a, um, I believe it was an ethnographic anthropologist or ethnographic archeologist who wanted to live with some indigenous, um, I believe Mexican tribes, but forgive me if it ends up being Bolivian or Ecuadorian. I don't think Peruvian, I'm pretty sure Mexican. And um, they also lived in community sizes in the traditional manner of their people. Um, uh, they lived in community sizes that um, uh, their environment could support. So he went to the, the, the main group, the nearest group to civilization, and he spoke with them and said, I would like to live with your people as your people and get to know you and, you know, write my papers, you know, my research on your lifestyle, your community. And, and they said, well, we need to talk with all the other communities before we can answer that. They said, you stay here, we're going into a cave. And the elders, the tribal elders went into a cave and they were there for some period of time, I think a few hours. And when they came out, he had assumed that they were gonna be doing their ceremonial cleansing and saging and whatnot before going on a journey to meet with all the other tribes. And they came out of the cave, he's ready to go traveling. And they said, what, what are you doing? You're supposed to stay here. We met with everyone and they agreed, this is a good thing. We're, and they had gone into the cave and called to all the elders in the general communities and all the other elders went into their sacred space, caves, sacred fire, whatever. And they all went into dream state and they had their meeting in dream state then and there. And they were all in agreement and they shared this. So I'm saying this because dreaming is a tool not just for processing your subconscious psychological issues, but it's also a tool for being one with your soul and one with your community, uh, one with anything of the non-physical. If you learn to harness your gut instinct and learn to be one with your dream state, and this also comes through a lot of just really trusting and having faith that your experience is a real experience, um, then it helps you to be empowered with navigating your life path and living your life as you wish to live it. So <laughs> I just wanted to share that with you. I was thinking about it. It's one of my favorite things to think about how to incorporate meditation, dream, imagination, 3D and you know, all of it into one cohesive flow of connection and frequency. So I just wanted to share that with you. And if you want to learn more about this sort of thing, feel welcome to join us. I'll put in the um, the description area, the link. Dante and I are leading a free class this Thursday and Friday. Um, Dante Constantine owns an amazing uh, uh, spiritual school and um, it's a monthly membership, but the first month is free. So if you'd like to sign up and uh, give your credit card information. It, if you enjoy it, then stay on in their school. And if you don't enjoy it, just get out. But uh, it's a beautiful spiritual school full of shamans and psychics and intuitives. And they, they teach all kinds of great stuff. Um, so enjoy your dreams, everyone. <laughs> and I hope you have a lovely day. Bye.